Greetings, Digital World, and welcome back to yet another episode of Spliced In Later, and it is time, once again, for another movie review. One that I am very excited to finally be talking to you about. If you are a regular listener of the show, you know that this review has been coming. If you caught my top 10 movies of last year, where I talked about my most anticipated movies for 2021, this movie was listed, most importantly because it was supposed to come out in 2020, and then it got delayed, as with every single other movie in the whole world that has tried to come out in the last 18 months. But it is now available. It is a unique film. It is a intense, epic film. And it is one that I think will divide people in terms of what they like in movies, what they're going to go see, and whether they go to watch movies to just have a good time, or just appreciate the art of filmmaking. We are today talking about the new movie, Dune, directed by Denis Villeneuve, based on a book, a rather lauded book that a lot of people treasure. I don't know that much about it, to a point where I can't even tell you who wrote the book. I have not read it. So this is a unique enough review, perhaps not that unique, but in terms of this reviewer's point here, in that I went into this movie having no idea about anything about anything for this movie. I avoided trailers, I did not look at posters, I couldn't have told you what actors were going to be in the movie going in, I couldn't have told you what type of thing it was going to be. I knew it was a sci-fi thing, but whether it's a sci-fi action film or a drama film or a western, who knows? Because I was excited to experience that. I love Denis Villeneuve films. It has been established many episodes before and many episodes since. He's one of my all-time favorite directors and he's directed some of my all-time favorite films. For example, Prisoners, Arrival, Blade Runner 2049. Three fantastic films, all directed by Denis Villeneuve, that have topped my top 10 movies of 2013, 2015, and 2017, depending on which film each year each of those films came out. But now I could have read the book, I hear it's a good book, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go to a film and not know every little thing that was going to happen, not expect things to happen. I wanted to learn the story as a casual person. If Denis Villeneuve is presenting Dune to me, having never seen Dune, can I appreciate the movie for what it is? For something like Harry Potter, I don't know what it's like to watch a Harry Potter movie having not read the books, but having read the Harry Potter books, I know that there are very important, very entertaining bits of the books that are cut out of the movies, and then other bits which are changed, in, I guess, to appeal to a wider audience or whatever, which is hard for me to wrap my brain around. To the point where I like the Harry Potter films, but I've never loved them because of that. And I worried if I saw what Red Dune, I'm sure I'd love it. I love books, specifically fantasy sci-fi type books. I'm sure I'd get a lot out of it if I read it. But once I do, the experience of this film changes drastically. I went with people who have read the book and appreciate and seen the movie. And I can give you their brief opinion is that they also loved it and they thought it was great. And they of course, recognize bits that were changed, things that were beefed up or toned down, things that were cut out, all of that stuff. They got their own experience out of it. But for me today, I'm presenting to you somebody who barely knows what Dune is. Did I like the movie? Yeah, you bet I like the movie. Fantastic stuff. Probably one of the greatest movies of the year. Could be my number one film of 2021. Hard to say, we still got a couple more films to come. But at the moment, Thinking what else I've seen this year in terms of entertainment, the magic of cinema itself, the scope, the directing, the story, the characters, all of that. Dune at the moment absolutely tops it all. Even Eternals, which I still think is vastly underappreciated by the majority of people in the modern world. So, I don't want to tell you what Dune's about too much. I try to avoid with these plot things, but specifically with Dune, I can't because I don't quite understand it. Something you should know before going into the film is that this technically is Dune Part 1. Denis Villeneuve has made the very, very smart decision, in my opinion, that the material in Dune is too dense and too crammed full of stuff that to try and put it all into one film would probably be a train wreck or a disaster or would not be the full experience that wish he wishes to give the people watching Dune. If you want to know about that, 
that has been done before. There was a Dune before this. There's been a few adaptions of Dune, but probably the most famous one is from 1984, directed by David Lynch, which from all intents and purposes, what I gather, has a bit of a cult following, but majority view it as an absolute train wreck of a film that goes completely off the rails and is a nightmare to watch. I did attempt to watch Dune in my youth a long time ago. When I say I attempted to watch it, that's incorrect. My father put the movie on. He decided that we were going to watch it. He gave me no information, no clues about it. I think he just misread the situation or whatever. But all I know about Dune, all I remember from that is that it had a very long opening with a floating head and then things were flying across the sand and it was so... I was not a fan. I did not get into it. I got bored. I told him to turn it off and that was the end of that. Looking back on it now as I get more into film, I believe I will probably watch it, but I am going to try the phenomenal task of still not knowing anything about Dune when the eventual part two comes out because this is Dune part one. It tells I think about half the book, may tell a little bit more or a little bit less. Again, I don't really know. But it finds a halfway point where it goes, okay, we've told enough of a story here. We've got two and a half hours done. There's still so much to tell, but we're going to stop. And we'll see in two years for the next one. So that, I think, is great because you can streamline your approach. You can focus on the part of the story that you want to tell. You can flesh out your characters. And most importantly, you can make the average cinema goer understand what's going on. Because that's the most important thing to take away from this review here. As someone who has never seen Dune, read Dune, I should say, or know anything about Dune. As someone who was told frequently before going to see the film, oh, you should probably read the book because you're not going to understand what's going on. It's going to be all this stuff. You'll get confused. One, it's a little bit insulting because it's sort of, it's an implication that people who've read Dune are smarter than people who haven't or are more in the know than those people aren't. And that if Dune is such this masterpiece of a book with such a dense lore and story that to adapt it only people who understand what it is will get it and other people who just pop in for a look won't that frustrates me movies for all intents and purposes need to be accessible to everybody if a movie exists and you can only enjoy it if you read the supplementary material then that movie itself has failed for example star wars the Rise of Skywalker and The Last Jedi, both movies which have said, have bits in their movies which they don't bother fleshing out or anything because they want you to go and buy the tie-in material, the books that explain where this character came from, the backstory for that planet, why this went a certain way and what was the result of that. You want to know what happened there? Read the books alongside it. No. Harry Potter, I mean... From what I hear, people can watch those movies having not read the books and they still understand what's going on. They don't watch Harry Potter and then Harry Potter goes, we'll have this scene in here, but if you really want to know what's going on, you'd better read the book to understand. I hate that stuff. You need to be able to see a movie and not see anything else and enjoy it. So, does this movie do that? Absolutely, 100%. As the average moviegoer who doesn't know anything, I understood what was going on. For the most part, I had a couple of little questions I asked at the end of it, but they weren't questions that I needed to know to lift the, the fog of confusion around the movie. I just had a few its and bits here, but just a few little intrigues, things that I wanted to know just to enhance my understanding. But for the most part, I knew the plot. And that's why I'm going to try and give you a brief outline here. Basically, what Dune is, Dune, and I might anger some people here, Dune, to me, is a lot like Game of Thrones in space. But not really, but sort of. But that sort of vibe. Our main character is Paul of House Atreides. Atreides. I hope that's the right way I'm saying it. Could be wrong. I practiced this on the way home. He is from the planet Kaladin which is ruled by House Atreides with his father, played by Oscar Isaac. Paul is played by Timothy Chalamet, and he has a mother, played by Rebecca Ferguson, called Jessica. They are a very noble, wonderful house. Everybody in this house is friendly and polite and kind, very honorable, very much the Starks. They live in part of the Imperium, so there's a big emperor that rules across all these other houses, and there is this planet called 
Arrakis, a big sandy planet full of spice. Spice, very important in this world. You need to mine the spice from Arrakis, and that is what essentially makes space travel possible. For years, Arrakis has been governed over by a very terrible house called House Harkonnen, or Harkonnen, Harkonnen, we'll say Harkonnen for the most part. Grubby, yucky, balding, freaky, tyranty creatures that uh, are very much villainous, sinister people. You know that they're the bad guys, essentially. The Emperor has decided to take Arrakis away from them, though. He's going to give it to House Atreides, which means House Atreides has to travel to Arrakis and start mining the salt, the spice there. And Paul goes along on that. Now, there's something about Paul. There's the, we need to talk about Paul, essentially. His mother, Jessica, isn't technically married to Oscar Isaac's Duke. She is from this special cult coven thing, which is like special witches who can command people with persuasion, possibly have this power to see the future. There's some mystical stuff going on. Uh, so she's a part of that, and she's given birth to Paul, which is unusual because they should only women have this power and they shouldn't give birth to sons, but she's given birth to Paul, which means Paul has the future of being the head of House Atreides, but he also has these little bits of power that he's benefited from from his mother's side. When they arrive on planet Arrakis, the native people there, the Fremen, have been essentially told by these, these witches coven that they've been whispered about that a messiah or a chosen one will come to their planet one day who will know their customs and have these skills, who will maybe possibly lead them to freedom or help them achieve some sort of goal of independence. But they see Paul and they immediately go, ah, oh, there he is, that looks like the one. So all of that's going on while House Atreides is trying to essentially get the spice mining up and running because the Harkonnens pissed off and they fucked everything up when he left. So they, they've got to do that. Meanwhile, the Harkonnens, of course, don't want to take this lying down. So they are making plans to eventually come back and take take back. Where the Emperor sits on this, bit shady. I'm not exactly sure whether he's doing things for the good of the Atreides or the good of the Harkonnens or for his own personal nature. But the, the main point to take away from this film is that Atreides house, good people, good, good. You want them to succeed. You don't want them to die horribly. And then, of course, towards the end of the film, Harkonnens come back with a vengeance. There's a lot of action, lots of violence. Everything spills out into the deserts of Arrakis, the dune, if you will, where giant sandworms are out there swallowing people up by the thousands, which eventually will get to a point where the movie decides that's enough story for now and finishes up. See, you get the gist. It's a fairly straightforward story, in my opinion. I'm sure there's a lot more to it when you read the book, but for the most part, simple, entertaining stuff and a good story, a good plot, which I think most people can get involved in, especially Paul and his father and his mother and his fellow Atreides warriors and friends, his his best buddy general friend Duncan Idaho, played by Jason Momoa, no-nonsense general, forget his name, played by Josh Brolin. There's another general with a cool little parasol who I thought was wonderful, and a few other assorted characters splitted here about. The cast in here is sensational, so many people. Javier Bardem plays a very prominent member of the Fremen. He's great, he steals the scenes he's in. Zendaya is in this film. Sort of. She definitely is in scenes, but she has a very important role to play for the future of this franchise. And I think she did well with what little she actually did in the film. Stellan Skarsgård is the Baron for the Harkonnens, and he is delightfully ugly and disgusting and, and rules the scenes that he's in. David Desmalchian and Dave Bautista are his little henchmen. So yeah, there's a lot of actors all spread out all through here. Big name stars who all really give 110% to the performances that they're giving, which is great. Now, I've been told that the movie has been, if, if you are a Dune lover, if you've read the Dune book and you want this movie to be a complete 100% adaption, I have been told that's not quite the case. Certain backstories for certain characters have been either hinted at or not really fleshed up. Uh, other scenes have been beefed up in terms of tense or action so they can translate better to the big screen. And of course, you're not going to get the whole Dune story because it is only part one. But I think 
people have to understand and accept that this is a movie and you have to entertain the people so no one you can never go and watch a book adapted 100 percent to a film because the way one reads a book and the way one watches a movie are incredibly different if you want to see how writing a book for a movie doesn't work watch fantastic beast the crimes of grindelwald jk rowling writes the script for that and she writes the script like she would write a book which means that when it translates to the screen it's a big mess if you are reading the crimes of grindelwald as a book it might work it might make more sense but as it stands it doesn't so dune does good i believe from making the right decisions to keep it entertaining i was thoroughly entertained for the whole film except for the last bit and that's what i do want to say this isn't a hundred percent review for the film most you can never really get a hundred percent for films but for the for 90 percent of it it did really well at establishing the characters establishing the world establishing the stakes getting to know everybody getting to know everybody's intentions building 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 to a climax where there is a big fight and, and a big big despair and people are at their wits end and people are dying and making sacrifices for one another all to get paul to different parts so that he can achieve his goals and his his destiny of sorts but then in the last half hour of the film once all that action and excitement has subsided the film meanders it, like it literally meanders in the desert while it sort of shuffles along unsure i w i remember very much shifting in my seat and going okay we are at the two and a half hour mark here if you are going to finish the film finish you've got to you've got to wrap this up you sort of you're struggling along towards the finish line here when you could have put the finish line a few yards back and it would have been fine it does beef up again for its last little exciting act to finish the movie but there's just that little chunk which you got to be prepared for i think because you will feel yourself going okay what's happening now what's the point what what are we heading for are we finishing are we still do i still have another hour left to this film i'm not sure i think what makes this film probably the best one i've seen this year though is without a doubt the direction as expected by denis villeneuve there's something about his direction which i just love and i've, I've decided that it is scale and the ability to showcase what it is on screen and to make it feel 100 percent real and to understand the size and impact of what you're seeing when i saw blade runner 2049 back in 2017 i saw it with a friend and i remember when after the film my friend was telling me it was good i liked it i really got bored in those scenes where ryan gosling was walking around in the desert with all the orange sand taking in the remains of las vegas or when he was wandering through the the rain covered city and looking at the giant hologram of Anna de Armas like I got the point in the first couple of minutes I didn't need to keep seeing that whereas I thought those were some of the best parts of the movie because the scale of what you were looking at the re remains of Vegas for example covered in that orange dust and minuscule Ryan Gosling walking around it made it feel real and it impacted to see this place this place that does exist in real life to have been swallowed up and just abandoned and the way it has changed and it felt real it felt like i was in the movie with ryan gosling this stuff wasn't cgi or fake or anything this was real and i could appreciate the scope and and the the atmosphere that ryan gosling was taking in when it comes here for dune it works tenfold specifically for the giant spaceships for the giant sandworms for the big dune atmosphere the sand that they're all in it is incredible how Denis Villeneuve makes that stuff seem so real and so impressive. There are shots of giant spaceships landing on the surfaces of planets. The sound is incredible as well with the music by Hans Zimmer and the, the sound effects and everything going along. But you look up at the cinema screen and you take in this landing spaceship and you just, you're in awe of what you're seeing. And it's not just the spaceships, it's the... The world that this Dune world inhabits, House Atreides, House Harkonnen, it feels very believable and very real. What I've heard about the, the Dune film is that it, 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 in 1984, it leads more into the bizarre and the what the hell is going on. This is a complete brain fuck. And I believe that's if you give a film to David Lynch, that's what's going to happen. This is the guy who made Twin Peaks and Mulholland Drive and A Race Ahead. You're not going to get a straight, standard straightforward movie. But what's impressive with Denis Villeneuve's Dune is that everything you're taking in, the 
the houses, the Fremen, the way the sandworms work, the little bug aircraft that they use to fly from point A to point B with the fluttering wings, the the little shields that they wear for training or to protect themselves with the where the slow blade will penetrate, but the the blue will uh, will, will repel projectiles or whatever. It's all completely believable. It's all approached in an attitude that this is just how things are. It's not silly. It's not strange. Dune is not this wacky, quirky story with these crazy houses doing weird banana shit. This is just, okay, this is this is how these planets work. This is how these houses work. This is the science that they have to go about their daily lives. And it makes sense. You can imagine, yeah, technology will get to a point where this sort of stuff happens. And that is 100%, I believe it's his passion, Denis Villeneuve. You could tell when he first said he was going to make this film and the fact that he's fought to make it two films and he made this part one without any real assurance that part two would indeed happen. It could not have. Part one could have hit, could have got terrible reviews and then quietly they would have just gone, oh well, he was only making the one anyway, we're moving on. But he has gone into this with a passion and an effort and it shows 100% to both, I assume, the, the the big Dune fans. I think you're going to absolutely love it and you're going to get what you want out of it unless you're nitpicky. But for average goers, this is an entertaining science fiction film with great characters, a very interesting story that's easy to follow, a world that you understand and you are invested in seeing more of when you get to the end and realize that a part two is coming. And just a great experience and that's the final thing i will wrap up here as well is that this movie definitely works better if you see it on the big screen i know that it has been available for some time probably this dune review is late here in australia we were supposed to get dune in october but thanks to delta and and waves and waves of coronavirus and all this shit still going on it got pushed back from october to december but because it was released on hbo max it is available online. I don't know what it's available here in Australia for, but I know that it's 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 on one of our many our many streaming services. So you can watch it at home if you want. And if you've got the right setup, a gigantic TV screen, surround sound, sure, why not? But if you want to get a full proper experience for this film, for something like Dune, it is worth taking the time to go down to a movie theater and see it on the big screen. This the sound that I was getting out of this film, there's some odd moments where Paul is having visions of the future and he's hearing whispering. I was hearing whispering coming from all around me. It was completely immersive in the experience, seeing the big ships on the big screen and the fights and the explosions and the big sandworms and all of that looked absolutely incredible. And I don't think you would get the same emotional weight and feel if you were just watching it on your TV screen and you're not really paying attention because you've got to do the ironing and everything else that you're doing when, you, when you're at home, essentially. So if you really appreciate film, if you like the art of film, if you appreciate a good movie and take advantage of all the little aspects that make a film good, you need to see Dune and you need to try and see it in a movie theater. I understand people don't feel safe. I'm not pressuring you to do anything. I'm just sharing with you my personal experience and why I think I got what I got out of it. Final marks, Dune, 9 out of 10, obviously. Fantastic film, wonderful again from Denis Villeneuve. He's knocked it out of the park again. I had a really great time, really great experience. I really, it's movies like this that make me appreciate how much I like movies and film in general and why I enjoy going to see this stuff, especially stuff like this, which has, it's not a sequel or a reboot. I know it is based on a book, but it is not something that's taking something else and just making more of it. It's it's a, a new story and a new vision and a new way of telling things and showing things. And it's great. It's, it's truly, truly a great experience and I loved it. And I will definitely be seeing it again when I have a chance. All right. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you appreciate my very positive Dune review, which has been all over the place, but I think I've got my points across. I will be back next week. I don't know exactly when. I may be taking a week off. I'm not sure. It depends what I've got on in terms of end of year Christmas and Christmas parties and all of that stuff. But if I plan and see a movie next week, which I think I'm going to, you may get an episode later in the week for a review of that. So you'll just have to wait and see. But 
If you don't, you can use the time you would use to listen to my new episode to go see Dune instead. Ha ha. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening. I, it's been a treat talking to you. Until next time, stay safe, stay kind to one another. I love and appreciate you all as always. And I will catch you on the next one. You've been spliced in later. Adios, muchachos. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>